Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently up 1.13% to 38601. Ethereum up 2.59% 2 to 2574. From my 30 plus years inside financial markets, I share the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth in the process. If you would like daily updates, 365 days a year, 7 days a week on price movements in the crypto market, please subscribe to YouTube. Thank you for being part of our globally extended KS family. It's great to have you here. If you're going through a life pullback at the moment, please know that our community's love and healing thoughts are with you. There's always hope. You're not alone and the sun will come out again. As a community, we focus on real wealth and maintaining a positive excellence life trend. What we focus on is integrity, decency, kindness, inner and outer peace, as well as financial abundance. Just to let everybody know that I've released the March 2022 Coffee Club video, Rule 65, Price is Crowd Attention, and I've also released two living videos, two of the LV series in the Masterclass. Rule 138, all investors become traders every time they buy or sell. Crypto technical analysts have a scientific process to track investor attention and that's all about looking at price which is the reality of that particular crypto. We mark up our charts, we look to outside trends, look inside the crypto market, understanding that opportunities reset daily, enhancing our pattern recognition and finding the market's focus. We have our mental state right, we've mastered emotional control and especially fear. We make fear work for us, not work against us. And then we do the trigger, the buy or the sell. One thing that absolutely happens when people are new to the market, they tend to light switch in and light switch out without any of this research, without getting their head right. They don't think in a professional way, they think in an emotional way. And that's really, really normal. Four stages that all investors go through, panic and blame, zone one and zone two, that's just a normal process of gaining professionalism inside the market. As crypto technical analysts, we focus on zone three and zone four, especially probabilistic fearlessness, and we have a lot of rules that govern our behavior. All of those rules, such as the ones that I share in the coffee club each month, are to protect from loss, and to maximize gain. The thing is that you can never get rid of loss. Anybody who ever says, I can give you a sure thing and it can't lose. They don't know what they're talking about. That is not the case in crypto. Let's kick the process off with looking at outside trends. There's a lot of talk about crypto decoupling from the stock market. Crypto is under 2 trillion. The stock market is around $120 trillion globally and the bond market even in excess of that. Crypto is so tiny, it obeys the gravitational pull of the stock market. Bonds, even larger than the stock market, they work together. When people talk about decoupling, I think they're really talking about dephasing, not decoupling. Decoupling means moving independently, one not being reliant on the other. Dephasing means that they simply go in and out of synchronization. With crypto, we're really, really early in the adoption cycle, just literally pre-2000s with the internet. Crypto will continue to grow very, very strongly for a long period of time. Looking at outside trends and masterclass students, you will receive this life chart in TM6. We can see the VIX, the fear gauge of the stock market, absolutely bolting up. A lot of people are starting to throw warning signs that we could see a larger retracement. That is definitely possible. But it's not something that you should be afraid of. Typically, if anybody gets any negative news, they tend to light switch out if they're in zone one and zone two. And then price just reverses and they get really angry, especially with themselves, which is 
placing them in zone two, the blame zone. It's really important to ditch certainty. Just get rid of it. It doesn't help you. It just terrorizes you. Rule 114, markets penalize certainty. If you're absolutely and utterly certain that a certain thing that's going to happen will happen, the markets will penalize you. When talking about the panic zone and the blame zone, this is all tied in with the idea of certainty. People, when they just newly enter the market, any financial market, but especially crypto, they tend to buy green and they sell on red. They tend to go all in or all out and get basically freaked out when any negative news story hits or anything negative is spoken about. These are the rules of how to lose money. Please get out of there as quickly as you possibly can if you feel that you're in there. Zone 3 is where you make money. This is the patience and rule zone. It's not based on certainty, it's based on probability. We buy red, we sell green, but not necessarily buy red one day and sell green the next. Although some people do that, and that's okay. But the concept is we buy on red and tend to accumulate. All of the rules that I share with you are based inside this zone three. How to keep money is about zone four and positive excellence. It's all about integrity and decency, kindness, strength and boundaries. Keeping money is really, really important because you work so hard to make it in the first place and then grow it. We talk about the laws of money and the laws of real wealth inside the masterclass. I've put out several videos showing how much opportunity is inherent inside the market when there's volatility to the downside. Even during the Great Depression, people could have made an absolute fortune. And that was a time that many, many people were experiencing financial hardship. I suggest that you prepare yourself if you have some funds. It's not a bad idea to actually have or grow your 10510 fund at the moment. But you should be doing that already because if you've stayed with us for any period of time, I keep on pointing out this fear inside the market is not good. And also bond prices going up, gold escalating like this, the US dollar coming up, inflation coming up parabolically, as well as oil prices. This is really, really rare to see, but it is actually happening just to protect yourself is always a good idea. Rule 74, technicals beat fundamentals. The technicals just relates to the price action, the reality of what we're looking at. Fundamentals is always the promise. It's the projection. When we look at gold and silver, gold and silver are absolutely skyrocketing at the moment. Copper, palladium, platinum are also skyrocketing. The DXY is also skyrocketing, but what we do here is use the inverse DXY because the inverse DXY typically goes with the direction of the metals. You can see this a little more easily if I just show gold in the inverse DXY. You can see as the inverse DXY moves up, that is the DXY moves down, gold typically moves up. There's an inverse relationship between these two things. It doesn't always hold. We get decoupling, dephasing, and I use that deliberately because a lot of people say when you decouple one thing from another, they confuse desynchronization. You always get a level of desynchronization between two associated variables. But you can see here that the inverse DXY tends to predict the gold price reasonably well, not all the time. And when it doesn't predict it all the time, that doesn't mean it's broken. It just means it's dephasing. Looking at war sentiment and masterclass students, you'll get this in LV12. We've seen that General Dynamics and Northrop Gunman have done quite well recently. And we can see Airbus is selling off, as is Boeing because they're actually cutting down their contracts with Russia, whereas the other ones are supplying arms and armory. We can look at this as some sort of indication is war on the horizon. If we look to the NASDAQ 100, we can see it's coming down as fear is going up. 
We understand Rule 217. No stock market can escape the US's gravity. But why is that the case? It's because the US stock market is disproportionately larger than all the other stock markets. The US market has about 56% of all global investment in stock markets. Basically, when the US indices go in a certain direction, when they come down, we see other major indexes, such as the UK's FTSE, the Japanese Nikkei, the Australia's ASX and other countries come down with it. What you're seeing here, this white line, is the MOEX. This is the Russian stock market. All markets are interdependent and Bitcoin is also interdependent. Rule 225, Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. One thing to bear in mind is when the stock markets start to sell down, Bitcoin will sell down. And what I'm talking about are catastrophic sell downs, such as black swans. Black swans in the stock market will cause black swans in Bitcoin and also right across crypto. But these black swans tend to correct very quickly and they're absolutely the ultimate buying opportunities. In zones one and zones two, people are utterly fearful of black swans. That's because they want certainty. They want the certainty to know the price will go up and up and up and never come down. But that doesn't, life doesn't work that way. Inside zone three, where we have probabilistic fearlessness, we understand the roles of percentages. We actually welcome black swans. They're the ultimate buying opportunity and the ultimate profitability opportunity. But it requires a probabilistic mindset and lots of rules that we teach through the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. One vitally important concept when it comes to percentages, price decreases and the more the price decreases, the more it actually increases on the other side and price decreases are generally really, really short lived. For example, when we had the COVID black swan back in March of 2020, what we saw prices come down across about 40 days for the Dow Jones and the decrease was 38.4%. Of course, the governments had to step in and do something about it, and that's absolutely what they did. We saw the market rally back up 60% over the next 163 days. Professionals inside Zone 3 and Zone 4, we look for this kind of price action. We want to participate inside that. That is not what regular investors and traders do. But this strategy is, the, is at the heart of crypto technical analysis, knowing that when price comes down, when it repairs, it repairs more. For example, negative 38.4%, just coming up to 60.12. But if we just went a little bit further and aimed it at leveling out, just getting back to that particular level, it's a 62.48% increase. And this is where the rich make their money. They do it this way. Crypto technical analysts are not afraid of negative price momentum. In fact, we hunt it out. We make volatility our best friend because we understand that negative percentage moves down always have much larger positive percentage moves up. And that's actually where the profitability lies inside every market. And crypto is a crazy market with plenty of these ups and downs all the time. When looking at the Dow Jones, we can see the Dow Jones has been selling down, but it's reaching a level of multiple support. This is really important to understand. When price hits a support level, it does what's called a technical bounce. But of course, we're not addicted to certainty. The probability is that we'll hit this particular level, 31688, and do a bounce. We may even come up to 35051. We may come down again because there's a lot of turbulence inside the market at the moment. But please bear in mind, there are lower levels of support inside the market. The markets typically don't just fall off a cliff. They do so from time to time, but they generally hit particular levels of support and bounce. 
If we take this can into consideration with Bitcoin, we can see that Bitcoin has held the 38,004 mark for one, two, three, four, five, six days. Not bad. It hasn't gone realistically too far below that. It's gone a little bit below it, but it hit another level of support. This is why you need to mark your charts up. If we do get a technical bounce right now, we could make our way into this green area. If we lose this support, we will make our way lower. But what do the probabilities tell us? We're seeing a dramatic increase in fear inside the market. If this fear drops out, for example, it's been ramping up recently. If something happens to make the world feel more at ease, basically, if fear drops down, which it could reasonably do, we'll see a spike in the NASDAQ 100 and a spike across all industries. We'll see a drop in bond prices, the price of gold, the DXY, an increase in yields, oil coming down, inflation just coming down a bit. If we see something like that, we would expect to make our way into the green area. If we don't see that, we would expect our to, to make our way into this red area. When overlaying the NASDAQ 100, you can see that we only have to get a little bit of an uptick in the NASDAQ and it's possible for Bitcoin to really, really rally. This is the nature of Bitcoin and crypto. It's got a lot of investor attention at the moment. Yesterday, to get a bit of a feeling on the market, I put out a particular thing to vote on. Do people feel bullish, neutral or undecided or bearish? We had about 38% come in bullish, around 35% come in neutral and about 27% come in bearish. Bitcoin is currently trading at 38,698. We have good support that's been retested continuously at 38,004. Keep your eye on that level. And also we have lower support coming in line around 36,553. When it comes to resistance levels, the next major resistance level is 39,192. And the major resistance levels are actually from 45,092 up to 47,127. We could absolutely get movement in this green area if fear comes out of the market. That's why as a professional, you must make three informed decisions and you need to have the integrity to stick with your word. Integrity is really, really important to crypto technical analysts because when we actually put chart, charts out there, a lot of chart analysts can actually misrepresent data. We never do that. We don't stretch and bend things to distort the picture of reality, to fit some narrative. We just say the price as it is. So when it comes to making in advance probabilistic choices, please know what you will do if price goes down, goes up or goes sideways. And what if it just explodes upwards or explodes downwards or is going horizontal for a protracted period of time? You need to be prepared for all of this. When people get into the markets in zone one and zone two, the only expectation is that it will go up and never come down. They'll make 100% profit and 0% loss. If you're thinking that way, know that somebody has sold you an absolute fantasy. This market, the crypto market, is full of professionals. You need the knowledge. Looking at the crypto fear and greed index, we can see we're at a level of extreme fear. This is absolutely fantastic for crypto technical analysts because we know that extreme fear is a very, very good buying opportunity. It means that a lot of retail investors and traders, and we know that all investors become traders anytime they buy or sell. They've already sold. They've sold down. So basically, people look at price action like this and say, OK, it's oversold. I'll start to get back in. And they typically buy back in positions that they sold up higher. With level one and level two, you can get caught in a very nasty synchronization of selling on red, buying on green, selling on red, 
buying on green, selling on red, buying on green, selling on red. You can see that if you have this level of focus where you just inside level one and level two buy on green, you could find yourself basically decimated by the market. That's why as crypto technical analysts, we look for the red. It is the safest entry point. And there are always opportunities inside every market. If there were opportunities inside the Great Depression, just think about that. The Great Depression, that was the worst economic condition that the world ever had experienced. There were massive opportunities inside the Great Depression, and there are massive opportunities all the time in the market. If you can actually trade, you will do far better than if you can just only invest. Turning to liquidations, we've had about 121 million across about 38,000 positions. There's a thing that we say, friends don't let friends leverage trade. If you're leverage trading, you're very, very likely to get wrecked. What you can do is just to gain the knowledge and then from there you can scale. When you've got it right, it's just like building a business. If you build a business very slowly and you get the equation right, you can scale as you go. It's the same as investing. Just get the knowledge that you need. You don't need to leverage out because you'll get crushed. It's like the casino handing you a blank check and saying, just write whatever you want and just put your house up as collateral. They'll take your house. Shorts and longs are always getting liquidated in the market. So many people think in crypto that they can hedge. You can see the liquidations, both short and long, are always occurring. Please, please be careful. Friends don't let friends leverage trade. And with crypto technical analysts, we understand how leverage trading works, but we don't participate in it. Crypto is leveraged enough already if you just buy it at spot, which means you own it. And if you own it, you can ride it, ride things out. You can hold it for however long you like. Looking at Bitcoin options expiring at the end of March, we can see there's still a very large degree of positivity inside the market. We can see a lot of people are expecting $50,000 Bitcoin and the max pain price with the majority of options expire worthless is currently $42,000. We're currently trading at around 38,763. Rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. We've seen that Bitcoin can't escape the stock market's gravity. Other stock markets can't escape the US's gravity. All of these different markets are intercorrelated and interconnected and the alts are absolutely tied to Bitcoin. I always say, if you want to know what happened to your alt, the answer, Bitcoin happened. For example, when we look at Bitcoin's fingerprint, you can see this price action. It's up and down, up and down. Ethereum overlaying Bitcoin's gravity, that blue line, I've done that for all of these alts. We can see Ethereum and Bitcoin basically move together. Looking at Binance Coin, Binance Coin is in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity, but it's showing some degree of weakness at the moment. It's also starting to accumulate. This can be a really, really good sign when Binance Coin, an exchange-based coin, starts to accumulate. It's like people are saying, hmm, I might be ready to deploy back into the market. And this is why you see that you've got to stack so many probabilities together. You just can't go from one thing. You need many things. XRP is following Bitcoin's gravity, and it's just a bit stronger than Bitcoin at the moment. Well done, XRP. And we hope and we pray that XRP wins its case or Ripple wins its case over the SEC. That's good for the entirety of the crypto space. ADA, Cardano, just getting absolutely hammered at the moment. Why do I say hammered? Because if you look at Bitcoin's gravity, it came up, had a big rally in Bitcoin here, and then it came down to a specific level here and then it wobbled around a bit. What we've seen with ADA and also Solana is that they've both shown tremendous weakness. 
when looking at Bitcoin and it's coming down and consolidating like this, and then when we go across to AVAX, Bitcoin has come down, consolidating. AVAX is following Bitcoin's gravity. This is absolutely critical for you to understand how the gravity of Bitcoin will play out on your alts, will either make your alt or break your alt. And we've seen that Luna has been an absolute standout. When we see Bitcoin coming down, consolidating like this, you can see it in this blue line here. Look at Luna, it's done so well. It's moved in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. It moved down when Bitcoin moved down, but not by the same percentage. And that was a big difference from before. When Bitcoin moved up, it moved up very strongly and Luna didn't move up that much. Now we've seen a disproportionate weighting. What happens with gravity? It will pull different alts in its direction. When ADA and SOL eventually repair, we may see something like what we see with Luna right now. Just bear that in mind. These are the things that crypto technical analysts look for. Rule 32, find the market's focus. To find the market's focus, we can look into the derivatives and this link is in the description of this video. What it basically shows, I'll just explain it very, very simply. This percentage measure, you can think of it as strength. Bitcoin, 1%. Ethereum, around 2.5%. That means that Ethereum is moving up more strongly than is Bitcoin at the moment. And then when we look throughout the entire crypto space, just ranking them, what we see KNC, XMR, ZEC, Anchor, SFP, Luna, Zen, they're all doing quite well. And some of them are doing really, really well. When we go towards the other side and re rank the most negative, we see Rune, Cartesi, Atom, Alpha, Band are under the most negative price duress. Most negative price duress, most positive price momentum when we turn it to green. This is a fantastic site and it can give you some insight. We don't necessarily day trade as crypto technical analysts, but you can if you want, of course. But the concept is we get this kind of data. It helps us to stack our probabilities. I'd like to put eight opportunities in front of you, and these are just for your information. It can take a lot of skill and a lot of practice to identify strongly moving good projects. I'll just read eight out to you at the moment. And this is all about price reality. We don't look so much at the fundamentals. The fundamentals when you've got a large project in the top 100 are already pretty good. They would have to have good fundamentals to be there in the first place. But the price reality is the key. The first one is Luna, and we've seen Luna's been doing really, really well. AVAX is another one. And what I would like you to do today in the comments section, just pick one of these eight and just have an explanation as to why you pick it and where you would do a buy entry and a sell entry. And this is a really good thing to do. If you make your knowledge really, really practical, that's going to make the difference. And we've got such an incredible community. Let's have a look. Luna. Luna is doing incredibly well. You can see Bitcoin's gravity. It's just so far above it. AVAX is following Bitcoin's gravity, but it's looking like it might be overcoming levels of resistance here. SAN is also under resistance at the moment, but by the way, we measure this particular crypto. Sand is strong compared to other cryptos. Near, Near is following Bitcoin's gravity and it looks to be overcoming or have the potential to overcome second level resistance. Decentraland, Mana, is starting to even out. When you compare Mana to Sand, which one do you think is stronger? This is a really good thing to do. This is part of, of enhancing your pattern recognition. What about Gala? Do you think Gala is stronger than Sand or Gala is stronger than Decentraland, Mana? What about Iotex? How does that rate? And Phantom. We've seen a lot of off-selling of Phantom recently, but it's coming up to a level that we could expect a technical bounce in. 
picking an entry point and an exit point in just one of these cryptos could be really, really a great exercise for you to do. And you can discuss it through with the members of our community. Our community is just so warm and loving and welcoming to everybody. Please drop in and say hi. When Andre Cronier decided to call it quits with crypto for the third time in a couple of years, we looked at Phantom and said, well, Phantom has been selling down. So I just shared a little bit of insight into what I was doing. I took out one position at 133.11 when price was up here. And then when price was around this 139, I took out another position at 131.82. You can have definite sell areas. For example, this level of resistance that's flowing through here. I put half of this order as a sell order at 165.84 and I put another one at 193.11. If you actually look at this, this is really interesting stuff. Phantom has been coming down. And of course, the whole crypto market has been coming down. But there's always opportunity. And putting buy orders successively lower. These are some of my other buy orders. One at 115.56. One at 99. One at 79.14. And one at 58.81. I just put $1,000 per order in here. And it's just mainly a bit of a thought experiment, but it just shows you when you get variability of up and down actions, you can do actually very well if the crypto just gets to a resistance or potentially overshoots it. It's not even repairing itself. It's just going inside its own wave. And we know price is always moving in a wave. Please always bear in mind that you need patience to see these particular levels from being filled. That's why we place our buy orders in the market at successive levels of support downwards. And we just wait. Warren Buffett said that have, well, the markets basically take money from the impatient and redistribute it to the patient. Having the right rules of placing your buy orders successively lower. And what you can get is these long tail rejections that can come down and then slurp back up. And you can do really, really well. For example, if we just manage to sell at this resistance level, that's a 25.17% return. And that's not a bad return considering bank interest rates are nowhere near double digits. Inside the masterclass, we do a lot of this analysis over a long period of time, and I go through my actual trades. In fact, the trigger section is many, many videos, and it shows you how I scaled into ETH and CRV and Luna and many others, and I carried that forward as we go. It's actually the masterclass has a living masterclass section where I go through and I share my charts that I've updated or created. Your success is my focus. An interesting thing you'll notice in some of the testimonials, TG38, that's this particular video. If you're interested in becoming a crypto technical analyst and learning the skills of how to analyze cryptos by their own exponential price action, please come across to the testimonials section. There's a video here where I explain why I created the masterclass. And it's really important to understand my focus in transferring my knowledge. And then there are many different testimonials of people that have gone through the masterclass up to TG38, as I mentioned just before, and also a variety of people that have been going through the masterclass. It's good to read these comments. It'll give you an understanding. The description for the masterclass or oh, the link for the masterclass is in the description of this video, but you can come across to 
www.cryptotechnicalanalysis.org and I suggest you go to the ambassador page once you've looked through the masterclass and just you can talk to the ambassadors. The CTKS ambassador is the highest designation in crypto technical analysis and you can reach out to the ambassadors and have a chat with them and these ambassadors can also give you an 80% off discount. Please let me know in the comments what you think Bitcoin will do. We can see the number of shorts starting to come in. Do you think, do you feel bullish or bearish about Bitcoin? And what figure do you think Bitcoin can make it to over the next, say, week? If you're feeling a little bit concerned about how the war could affect crypto, please come across to episode 442. How markets react to war and smart money secrets they don't want you to know. This is also discussed in LV14 inside the masterclass, but it's comprehensively discussed here as well. You'll find all the charts that I share inside the masterclass. The masterclass is just all about sharing my knowledge, so I give you my charts as well. What you see in here, there are always opportunities inside the market. And if you know how to capture those, you'll do really, really well. You just need the knowledge. That's all that's required. If you're feeling a little bit concerned about what the markets are doing, it's very understandable. Just think about it like this. Chaos Zone Analysis, these are the four stages that every single investor and trader progresses through to become consistently profitable. When people enter the market, they're addicted to certainty because they just don't know what the rules of the market are. And if you don't know the rules, you can't play the game. So therefore, the panic zone and the blame zone is just a deficiency of knowledge. It does take a lot of time to learn the rules of the market. The rules of the market are in zone three with patience and rules and probabilistic fearlessness. Your three way decisions, understanding the role of percentages, having patience, having lots and lots of rules, using the CTKS method to mark up your charts, having a 10 5 10 volatility fund, just sticking with the reality of price, collecting probabilities and knowing that there's abundance out there in the world and the world does want you to succeed. Buying on red, limiting the number of things that you actually buy and understanding the interplay, the gravity of different markets on each other and that stacking of probabilities. There is a way to get through zone one and zone two into zone three where you make money. But keeping money is absolutely far more important. That's all about a positive excellence life trend. As a former lecturer in first and second year statistics, I use exponential learning techniques to teach you how to actually look at the market based on 30 years inside financial markets and coming from a finance degree as well with an actuarial science background. I believe in cutting through all the fluff and just getting to the point, but doing so in a really fun and easy to understand manner. And everything comes down to understanding, especially when you're there in front of your computer and it's time for you to buy or sell. That's when your understanding will kick in. Information is pretty much useless to people. It's understanding that's the key. I have a really interesting thing that we can also discuss in the comments section. When you look at this particular heat map, I see two things in here, XMR and ZEC, both coming up, XMR up nearly 29%, ZEC up 25%. These are very interesting currencies. Please let me know what you think this is about. I just want to let you know that the scammers are at it again. I do not have WhatsApp. I don't like WhatsApp. It's a scam app. So I have nothing to do with WhatsApp and I never provide phone numbers. I can just chat with you anytime through Twitter or through the comment section. A couple of people have reached out to me saying this particular imposter, this scammer is out trying to scam people. Please understand that you can reach out to me anytime on Twitter. Just to let you know, this is another scam comment. 
I'm just going to get rid of this particular person. When you see all these unusual writing, like a dot underneath or a hat on top, and then WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a scammer's application. Just beware of that. I do not use WhatsApp. I do not have people contact me directly by phone. I'm just too busy. Just as I was going through and getting rid of scammers, I noticed Prez as answered, as answered, asked a really interesting question. Are you, Ken, are you trading other markets, not just crypto? I prefer to focus on crypto for now, but just curious whether you do. I am 100% inside crypto. I find the other markets so incredibly boring. I parallel them to watching grass grow underneath ice. I'm just not interested in any other market than crypto. We watch the stock market and we watch precious metals to give us and the bond markets and yields to try and understand what crypto could be doing. I've actually heard of a lot of crypto influencers that have very little inside of crypto and I just can't comprehend that particular position. If you're going to talk about crypto and if you're not really committed to crypto, why are you talking about it? I'm utterly committed to crypto. I know of big influencers in crypto that hold very, very small percentages in crypto. It's just unbelievable. I just don't know how they can talk about crypto if they're not fully committed to it. I'd just like to share a comment that I came across from Greg. Greg said, I may be spending too much time on crypto. My wife asked me to get up and take out the trash. I told her I couldn't. I was suffering from gravitational duress. She said, what? I replied, no one can escape the gravitational bias of Bitcoin. Oh, Greg, you're so funny. The swelling on the side of my head is proof my wife bounces against my resistance level. I'm still bullish, Ken, but with a bit of a headache. <laughs> nice one, Greg. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video if you think it will help others. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. And just to let the moderators know, the scammers are really going into overdrive right now. I don't know, must be scamming season. Please keep your eye open for them and just delete them as soon as you possibly can. I've gone through quite a few videos and deleted the straggling scammers, but they're still getting through. So if you could look at that, that would be just beautiful. And thank you very much also to our CTKS ambassadors for mentoring masterclass students. And of course, a very big thank you to you for watching and being part of our global KS family. If you would like daily updates on the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video, such as the link to the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. Please say, seek out an ambassador to get 80% off. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe, safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.